Hi Terra Firma guitar viewers. Happy day here. We've got another guitar just arrived from Melbourne from Eastgate Music and I got a sticker from them. I'm putting the sticker on this case and why would you think that? Please have a look at my video on this guitar. This is a lovely all solid recording king triple O. But this one is not all solid. This is the cheapest recording king you can get. It's a series seven. And today what I've got is the Dreadnought. Please also look at my other video where I review this lovely little single O recording king. This is a nine plus, And I reviewed that against a series seven single O recording king. I kept this one because this nine plus has a solid spruce top. The series seven is made in a different factory and it's a laminated top. So why did I buy this guitar? I'm going to be giving it to my brother-in-law. So I was thinking what would be the best guitar for him? And let's see if this is indeed maybe one of the best budget guitars you could buy if you were wanting a beater or wanting a second guitar or you were buying a guitar for somebody. So let's check it out. Okay, look what we got here. I opened up the case and I've got a strap. Look at that, $25. Quality and excellent, Steph. Made in Canada. Good. Okay, so that's a freebie. Like even these really, really cheap guitars have become expensive and as we all know around the globe, inflation has been a real killer. I also jumped on this one because it's floor stock and it was reduced by a lot. In American dollars, this was less than $200. It came with this soft case. The case is Ritter USA, designed by Mark Ritter, made in China. You've got this zip here, it's really, really substantial. Let's have a look at this guitar. Okay, so it's got this, they've kind of got it wrapped up in the original wrap, right? Looks pretty mint to me. And the other deal was you got these six picks. Nice. Yeah, I don't think this has been on the floor. If it has, they've gone to a great deal of length to put the protective sheet back on the thing. Yeah, so initial observations. Very raw, untreated. I don't know if these are rosewood, I will confirm. But also look at this, it's, it's not a belly bridge. It's a vintage style, straight. Bridge. And a nice pale timber on the neck. And yeah, I remember this from the, the single O. And these are stenciled, these inlays. In fact, look at this inlay, it's a bit out of whack. It's like closer to this side than the other side. And I do like the headstocks. Yeah. yeah. These buttons, I might upgrade those. I've got some tuners there. Now you can also see my other video about how I upgraded the tuners on these Recording King guitars. I like the tobacco sunburst finish, and I also like this pick guard. And the clue to simply being laminated at the top, they've got the edging on the sound hole. The irony is it's white wood, but the finish on these Series 7 and 9 guitars is this semi-gloss black finish. And look at the neck black as well, and the headstock, everything's black on the back. It's got nice white binding, it's really quite smart. And what have we got here? Look, quality control passed. Nice saddle height, bone saddle and a bone nut and just to feel the neck off the bat look it's slim yeah it's probably more like that blue ridge slimness to the neck and once again you can see my videos about blue ridge guitars one of my first videos i ever made was blue ridge versus eastman okay so guys this is straight out of the box i barely had to tune the guitar <laughs> does need a setup, right? So first of all, I've noticed that it's a little bit sharp along here. Um, Listen to this. There. Fret 13 and 12 a little bit. We've got some high frets here, okay? Now the action's quite low on this. There's just this sort of relief. I, I don't want to touch the relief. And a bit of relief on the top B. It's lightly made, it doesn't feel heavy. You know? My initial impression, as it was for that Series 11 triple O, for the price, the 
caveat being, you know, I do need to do a setup. So I guess you're going to go down the bottom of the barrel, keep $100 aside to get it professionally set up. <laughs> oodles of bottom end and warmth but I think it's a heavier guitar and so it creates power but it hasn't got that bright presence which is that little cheap recording King's got so and you see those reviews you read a lot of people say the guitar's a lot of fun to play and, and they find they just keep picking it up so maybe it falls into that category of the guitar you buy for your barbecue beater these polite well-made guitars sound beautiful but they don't quite have that bluesy thing it does sound pretty good all right, so let's have a little sticky beak at the top. Laminated, but yeah, there's the, there's the grain. It's very fine. Look at this little interesting thing here. What's going on there? There's a little bit of a, a bit of wood or a bit of bristle into the top there. Interesting. In fact, all along there, it's a little bit grungy, the way they've glued that on. So this is a dirty 37 series. I like the way they've, they've handwritten the label. Look at the serial number, 1905. I wonder if this guitar's already five years old. So let's have a look at the white wood. Look at it, it's super tight grained. You can almost not see grain at all. And the bracing looks really clean and nice. The forward brace is forward. So this is up quite close to the sound hole. So they've probably got a forward bracing pattern on this guitar and that's gonna help make it lively and loud. By the way, I just picked that off. Yeah, I've got the strings off the uh, new arcade. I'm just putting some oil on the, uh, the fretboard. I'm just using olive oil. As I suspected with that Ratley D, look at that. It's quite subtle, but on the third fret, as you come over, it starts to rock. So what I'll do is I get my, my marker, and I put just over the parts of the fret that are high. Not all the frets gonna be high uniformly. You have gotta find which bits of it are rocking. Rocking in a bad way, as opposed to rocking in a good way. This is what I think is going to happen, guys. Very so slightly there, ever so slightly on fret. Oh, there's a high one. That's the highest one we've got so far. So right up here, that's rocking the most, see? Okay, so that was very, very high. And that guy, that little bit middle was great. And then just one little one down there. I've been working with this and I was coming backwards like this. Right. I think it's taking too long because really this is meant to be crowning the fret. I did this to my single O. And hopefully this will take down that high fret before it takes the other ones down. But I've also got to get a little bit off this one. What do you think, Luthi? Is on the right track? Got the piece of paper here protecting the top. Okay, so I have sort of run the, the rounding file on these top ones. All right, folks, so uh, I've got the, uh, the strings back on the new guitar. And uh, look, I, I went with the old ones. They came with so. Okay, so a couple of days in. So where I'm at with this guitar is it's got a lot of charm. I'm coaxing out a nice tone out of it.
sounding pretty chintzy. Tonight it's sounding really nice again. It's got a really punchy mid-rangey push. And that top string's very, very strong. It's got a really sweet a bit of overtones and it's a lot more light than the Yamaha, but it's still got a bit of bass. It is literally a lighter guitar too, they've just built them right. So I think that's offsetting all the laminates. Okay, so I'm going to have to have another round of taking the strings off fret. the RK7. It's gone all and fat. I've already had a good go at these frets, but it's because I'm getting rattling on the D and definitely on the A. Focus. So if you play it soft, it's okay. I wonder if it's where the strings at its greatest amplitude. Look, the other thing I need to do is, is they're still a little bit sharp here. I'm going to have to spend some more time just putting, taking the edges off here. In retrospect, just running that file up and down here just made it sharper. So quite a lot of work to do to get this thing going well. And I guess it's because it's got a low action. So I think if you're prepared to spend some time on it, they are good. It makes me think I'd love to get the solid top version of this, the 9 series, because I think something's going on here with this white wood. It's a really punchy pushy sound for this dreadnought body. I was super impressed with the little single O in this series as well. And I'll just play a little bit of, of that previous video. Okay, so this is probably the showstopper for um, anyone who wants to go up the neck. Terrible intonation, right? Plus we've got this fret buzz. Yeah, so we're going to get those frets underway, but you can see the intonation's a challenge. I do not know how I missed this. 15th fret the first time around it's so high and I'm really hoping it's going to get this guitar sitting in beautifully once I get them flat another couple of days later and I just wanted to express my frustration with this guitar I'm really enjoying it but I had the strings off yesterday and I was doing more leveling up here I actually even found a saddle that was ever so slightly higher so I thought it would be all good to go but when I've put it back together I still get the D rattle I'm still getting a buzzing fret here on 12 this time, so I don't know. It's a shame because the guitar's really nice otherwise. And when you pick it up compared to the, the a Yamaha and the Eastman, it's just a lot lighter. And that's what I like about these guitars. So really what we want is, is to step up in quality and keep this lightness. 
because mm. really they, they are very lively to play and uh, also the triple O I've got I'm frustrated about the thinness of the top strings but the overall voice of the guitar is really lively and big they sound more open and projecting than these heavier built guitars which have a lot more depth and resonance but they're kind of muted as well and they just don't have that push so uh, I think the truth lies somewhere in between. Well, this gets back to a common comment about the Recording King guitars or any cheap brand is that they're hit and miss. And so some are great and some aren't as good. And that's not so much in the sound, but it's in the setup and playability. I know this firsthand because I was impressed by the first Dirty 30s guitar I got. It had exactly the same neck and timber setup and same scaling, but it was just a rock solid little guitar and it played really well. It didn't have any rattly frets. The neck seemed very straight. But yeah, this one on the other hand has got these problems. So and that's a bit of a deal breaker isn't it I mean it does make it frustrating for any level of player if you've got a guitar that's not really ringing properly and the strings are rattling a bit and that sort of thing and I've just checked the height on this guitar I don't think it's the fact that the saddle's too low I've got just over five so it is a bit low and then this side I thought is a bit too low this is on four and then the D string five so I don't know it's, it's on the low side isn't it so I could possibly go up a slightly higher saddle and that might solve some of these issues but you can see I've been working on this for days yeah and also do you like his teeth yeah I'll show you who it reminds me of so the guitar's got character you've got to hand it that mm -hmm. 